Got your back against the wall, no, you know you never had a chance. Should've known better, now you better make other players. There's no going back, gotta let you know in advance. This is Game Squad. Hey, how's it going, YouTube? This is Joe Grizz from the Team Avalanche Worldwide YouTube channel, and today I'm coming at you guys with my picks for the top 10 Yu-Gi-Oh! decks for the February 2016 format. And without further ado, we'll get into it really quick. Coming in at number 10, I chose to put Yang Zings. Now, Yang Zings, uh, even though they haven't been popping up everywhere as of late because everybody's so hype over magicians and mage specters and pendulums and cosmos and you know still people still playing title knights even ba has seen a great great showing uh no one has really like leaned on to like yang zings but yang zings is still a great deck you know people sleep on it a lot but it's still a really great deck i think it's a really fun deck uh it has really big synchro spam capabilities like yazi and things like that it can it can make any any pretty much any synchro because it's uh, that's what it does. Spam synchros has access to instant fusion, Norton Infinity. You know, same as majority of every other deck in the format. Majority, like I said, uh, or they can go instant fusion Norton into easy synchro plays with Norton. Because that's you know, it's just it's free plays. You know, uh, they can main deck floodgates, lose a turn, skill drain, um, anti spell fragrance, stuff like that. Time space trap hole with trap tricks, uh, Reflicia. You know, just make it easy to control the board while. Bringing out infinite floaters. You know, uh, they have a great matchup against Cosmos. Cosmos try to OTK into them. And they just keep coming back. Keep, you know, um, taking over the board. So, that's, they have a decent, really, really good matchup against Cosmos. And, uh, yeah, I just think the deck overall is a fun deck to play. And I think it still has a lot of potential in the upcoming formats. Uh, it didn't lose anything, really. Didn't lose anything at all. It still has maintained its uh, credibility. Just a lot of other decks got faster, so it hasn't really like uh, seen too much light. But uh, moving on to number nine, I have Heroes. Now, Heroes, a lot of fusion spam. Dark Law and Acid combos are ridiculous, especially against Pendulums, because Pendulums don't go to the graveyard. They go to the extra deck. So with Dark Law on the board, everything sent to the graveyard will get banished instead before uh, completing the mechanic of going to the top of the de extra deck. So... You know, if you go acid, pop, dark law, and then acid, pop the back, the pendulums, they just get banished. So now they don't get to capitalize on those plays. It has in access to instant fusion, Norton Infinity as well. Infinity is going to play a big part in this format, I believe. And the people who know how to play it properly are going to see the, reap the benefits thoroughly. A lot of OTK potential, because you can push through with a uh, mass change and stuff like that. Miracle fusion, um, a lot of rank four spam. Like I said, with access to Instant Fusion, Norton. Uh, the engine itself can be splashed into other decks. Because I've seen um, a few decks where, like, the top top events, where the guy was playing Hero uh, Magicians, which was really, really great to me. Re really innovative to me, in my opinion. You know, to be able to splash the engine in, the same way they splash in Magicians, the same way they splash in Pepe. I mean, uh, Performance Clowns, you know, stuff like that. Same way they splash all these engines in, into decks. To see Heroes splash into the deck, in a small engine, but it, it did its job. Dark Lord played its part in maintaining balance in that tournament, in that regional. So it, it was really good to me, um, in my opinion. And they could play, you know, Grand Horn of Heaven, like I said. Uh, just like Acid and Dark Lord, Grand Horn of Heaven, if you hit all the pendulums, they get banished with Dark, Dark Lord on the board. So it's really a hefty price to pay for playing against Dark Lord and not thinking responsibly. And they can play Trap Tricks, Reflecia as well, because it is a rank, a power, power rank four, like Infinity. Um, like, well, like all of them, really, pretty much. Um, moving on to number eight, we have Mermills. Now, Mermills, I didn't think they were going to make a comeback ever. I think, I thought they, they outlived their uh, time back then when... It was, you know, Fire Fist, Mermills, you know, then Dragons came along and stuff like that. I just thought they weren't going to really come back with anything. And I think they have a big chance in this in this format. Uh, they have a, a lot of rank 4 slash rank 7 spam pit capabilities. Access to Abyss Gaios. Gaios just negates effects. All effects, you know, on, on the board. Uh, monsters that are bigger than him. 
a level five, five or higher cannot attack. So, like, um, summoning Dark Destroyer or, you know, whatnot or um, Forerunner or stuff like that doesn't do anything. Playing against Infernoids, you know, summoning big beaters, they can't do anything. You make this card, they have to sit there and just deal with it. And it gives you time to capitalize because you can easily get over those cards by playing, you know, the deck properly. Um, they have access to uh, Neptibus slash Dragoon slash Elanian Marksman and M Heavy Infantry. All these cards are great. Uh, just the Elanian portion of the deck has got intense because Nept- Neptibus can uh, be summoned to dump any one of them to the grave, any one of them to the grave, and add, and add one to hand. So. You can easily put dragoons into the deck. It's like you don't. You no longer need um, Gen X Undyne or Controller or stuff like that. You don't got to play that in the deck anymore. Like those cards come up dead a lot. Sometimes people drew, drew controllers and didn't want to play the deck at all. It just became a really pain in the butt. And uh, I think the, I think the deck itself is going to be really really powerful going forward because a lot of the the pro players who did play Mermos back in the day have come back and decided to try to run it again. And I think with their knowledge of now of the formats and of pendulums and everything else, I think it's going to be a really, really great choice coming into the 2016 um, February format. <clears throat> Number seven, I got uh, Infernoids. Infernoids have a lot of OTK potential. You know, they have access to Instant Fusion, Northern Infer- Inf- Infinity, <clears throat> Infinity as well, sorry. Uh, Cypher and Omega is a big card. You know, the Sigur capabilities are, are also... Very demanding and huge. A lot of graveyard control. Like, playing a deck that's based around the graveyard is not greatest against it. This deck, because this deck can uh, really punish it. You know, uh, tributing monsters to banish cards. You know, put the big beaters on the board. It, they swarm so fast. If they open the right hand going first, they just blow you out. There's, you can't stop it. You know, if you have to have the good board, the groundbreaking board. And because it doesn't, it doesn't depend on... Uh, you know, pendulums or anything like that, people really are main decking outs for these pendulum decks, and this deck doesn't revolve, revolve around it, so it's a hard time to get over it. Uh, they have huge beat sticks, like I said, huge beat sticks. So it's hard to get over them. Uh, this guy right here, Infernoid Un- Ununsku. <laughs> he a 3,000 beater, just like Destroyer, you know. So he matches wits, I would say. He matches strengths when it comes to that. Uh, they have access to Twin Twister because these decks do not play a huge amount of back row. Twin Twister to discard their monsters to the graveyard to pop the pendulums. You know, putting their big monsters in the graveyard is not a minus to them because they can just um, banish cards, special summon them back to the board. So, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it doesn't hurt or hinder them in any kind of way to use these kind of cards. And then Reason and Monster Gates, just the OTK, are amazing in this deck. Completely amazing. Um, number six, I have Burning Abyss. Burning Abyss, yeah. Burning Abyss to me has really, really, really come back up in the ranks as being important again and playable. You know, um, being able to splash it with stuff like Dark Lore, like I said with the Hero Engine. Dark Lore is controlling, you know, it just wrecks your opponent completely. Especially wrecks the pendulums and stuff like that because they can't go on top of the extra deck, like I said. Um, they can play skill drain if they want to, you know, they have beaters, they don't really lose to it at all, um, a lot of OD potential, a lot of OD potential, OD, rank 3 spam, uh, they have access to, um, uh, Phoenix Wing Blast, for Geki Break, and Twin Twister, Twin Twister, destroy back row and dump the Burning Abyss cards to the graveyard to access their, their effects, so, that itself is really, really great. <clears throat> Excuse me, I feel it. <laughs> um, with the new additions to the deck, like Twin Twister and Phoenix Rhino Warrior, I think that the deck has what it you know what it needs to make a slight comeback and be recognizable again as a good deck. You know, uh, Phoenix Rhino Warrior. If you guys don't know what it does, when it's sent to the graveyard, you can you can send uh, one Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard, ac- activating its effects. You know, and then when it's on the field. Fiend type monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects, which means if you play Fiend Rhino and then flash a Burning Abyss monster, 
it hits the field, doesn't get destroyed by his, by his own effect. Now you can overlay that into Dante, which is banana sandwiches. <laughs> and uh, they can main deck um, Horn of Heaven and Grand Horn of Heaven. Like I said, discarding cards. I mean, uh, yeah, discarding cards or sending cards to the graveyard activates their effects, puts you in a bad predicament, puts them in a great predicament. You know what I'm saying? So this deck, deck is, uh, to me, a good running. Um, coming at number five, I have Satellite Knights. Now, Satellite Knight, you know, I always love this deck. This is, this is like one of my all-time favorite decks of all time. Uh, this deck, even though I wanted to put it like number one, nah, <laughs> I can't because uh, it's not there yet. But it does have a great matchup against a lot of, a lot of uh, the main decks, and its floodgate capabilities are retarded. Access to Trevere to bounce everything, you know, that's not always the greatest against Pendulum decks because they can just redo it, you know, re put board pressure. But if you can bounce everything up, like uh, exceeds and synchros and stuff like that, then it kind of hinders them a bit because all they have is those Pendulums, you know. Uh, Alpha and Solemn Strike, you know, add to a big ensemble of back row that, power back row that makes them, um, kind of un unstoppable sometimes because, you know, you can't really go off knowing that you're flying into a million cards, you know, unless you have cards like Danko Psycho, you play that kind of deck that can use Danka, then, you know, you're really going to get destroyed by this power back row, especially with the new additions like Solemn Strike. A lot of rank four spam, access to instant fusion, Norton Infinity, Trap Tricks, uh, Reflecia, you know, basic, your basic rank four spam engine. Uh, Call of the Haunted, Oasis of Dragon Souls, you know, just those cards in conjunction with the, with Tunlight Monsters just ultimately draw you through your deck as fast as you can and create a huge amount of board presence, a huge amount. Especially uh, help you make, uh, well, not Oasis, but Call of the Haunted uh, with, a, with a big play helps you make number 86, Frong. Rongo Minid. <laughs> I don't know how I gotta say this guy's name. I never say this guy's name properly. But uh making him uh you shouldn't lose when you make him. Really you really shouldn't. You should not lose when you make this guy. You know, if you if you can make him on time, destroy all the cards on the board with five if you can. You know, uh prevent them from special summoning or normal summoning monsters. Can't be destroyed. It just it's great. Uh Diamond is still a great card. You know, Diamond is in the extra deck now because you can attach it to Ptolemaeus to make Infinity, make uh, Nova and Infinity. And then, or you can just play it regular just to stop Burning Abyss or so, any other dark deck or Infernoids. Because Infernoids have to send decks to the graveyard with uh, Reasoning and Monster Gate, and they cannot, you know, with, with uh, Diamond on board. And then the main deck Floodgate capabilities are amazing you know like uh anti spell fragrance that card has become like the new vanity's emptiness in the format so being able to have access to that card all the time and not be hurt by it is amazing like i know ton like decks that just play anti spell fragrance and then they play like five spells like those five spells probably being like three mst one Rayeki, and one like instant fusion if they decide to play it if that or if not, just play the three MSTs and the Regeki. Like I've seen a lot of decks do that, and they just, and it doesn't hurt them because they have so much, so many uh, special summon capabilities with the traps like uh, Court of the Haunted and Oasis that they don't need it. But the, the, again, this deck is is uh, is great to me. Uh, number four, uh, Magician Mage Specter. We're gonna combine them a little bit real quick and have them explain together. Uh, Mage Specter before in the beginning of like the November format was really really powerful by itself with a uh, performance performance Mage Specter, it which is a really fast and, and amazing deck. I had a, a profile of Joe Bogley when he won first place uh, at, at the the last tournament of the format going into November 9th. It was November eighth was the tournament, and he won with this deck, and I thought the deck which is gonna be amazing, amazing, amazing. But it it kind of it, it's great, but it's not as good as it should be because every other deck, every other, like, Pendulum card that came out after it really, like, took over. And you just can't, you can't, like, you can't do what you want to do with the deck anymore because now people are used to it. They, they're used to the plays. Um, for the pluses, like, you know, it has access to Instant Fusion, Northern Infinity, like everything else. Overdecay potential if it wants to because it can Pendulum. 
the engine can be splashed into other decks, like uh, both of them, Magician and Mage Specter. Uh, Kieran, Kieran prevents OTKs. Like, uh, it's a hard card to get over. And just when they try to push for game and they can't, Kieran just helps you, you know, uh, prolong that. So, and they can play a lot of power traps. You know, the Mage Specter trap. They can play uh, Solemn Strike and stuff like that. So, their capabilities of... Uh, of gameplay are amazing, but they just can't keep up with like a uh, regular full power Pepe, you know. So it, it just can't be it can't be higher on the list right now. I feel like the deck is gonna struggle to to maintain its presence a lot in the, in the upcoming format. Uh, number three, Cosmos. Cosmos. I thought last format they were at number one, and they were for a while. They were at number one. Uh, in my opinion, they were good. Everybody's list had it at number one. And uh, right now, it's not the best deck, but uh, I guarantee that come uh, YCS Atlanta in February, this it'll be like, I bet you it'll be like, uh, I'd say 40, 40, 40% of the meta would be Cosmos. And then, <laughs> or 30, we'll say 30% would be Cosmos. We'll say 60% will be uh, Pepe, full power Pepe, and 10% will be, uh, <laughs> anything else, everything else, that's how I see it being, you know, I see it still being a powerful deck, a lot of OTK potential, uh, the ability to play through powerful boards, you know, it could just run through it, because the cards keep recycling themselves when destroyed, you know, uh, recycle with Cosmo Town, access to emergency teleport, so they have infinite resources, you know, with Cosmo Town, and in front has um front of the, uh, emergency teleport I'm sorry <laughs> and reasoning reasoning also because you can you can activate reasoning to summon um you know destroyer destroyer pop blow up you know and it's just great it works it works great 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 they're amazing powerful beat sticks you know it's pretty hard to get over because you know you destroy one and another one takes its place so you don't really want to destroy them. It's hard to destroy them unless you could beat over them, which is really hard to do. And uh, like stuff like Forerunner can't be targeted. Uh, I believe Destroyer can't be targeted either. Yeah, Destroyer can't be targeted. So that in itself is makes it very hard to beat and deal with these kind of decks. Um, yeah, I just think the deck is really really powerful still, but it's uh, not number one worthy. Number two, a deck coming out in like a week or so. <laughs> Monarchs and the Monarch Racer that comes out. Uh, this we're gonna see a lot of a lot of like Monarch play. I forgot. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna correct what I said about the Cosmos. I said I think Cosmos will have like 20%, 20% of the, the tournament. I think uh, Monarchs will have th- like 30, maybe. So we'll say 20, 30, and then Pepe will have 40, and then 10% will be for the other decks. There you go. That'll be my math. Going into like, uh, so it was 30, 40. Did I said that right? 20, 30, 40, and 10. Okay, yeah, 100. <laughs> uh, that'll be my math going into the tournament. I think this deck is going to be heavily played and abused. People are already trying to uh, play this because you don't need to waste money for this. This is a structured decks, and it always happens. Uh, a lot of, lot of abuse for Curaz, pop two cards, pop your own cards, draw. You can recycle them, so you're not really care- scared of uh, popping your own cards. Curaz can pop pendulums, make you draw if it wants to, but it doesn't have to. You can, you can most likely, you just pop your cards, so you can recycle them. Um, the field spell says you cannot summon from the extra deck. The field spell says if you do not control, if you do not have an extra deck and you control a tribute summon monster, then your opponent cannot special summon from the extra deck. That's the can't pendulum summon. They cannot sink or summon, can exceed summon, can't fusion summon. They can't summon from the extra deck whatsoever just because you have a field card and a tribute summon monster. Uh, and that's an easy, like, lockdown. So, like, uh, if you have if you have the field card and March of the, Mo- March of the Monarchs and, uh, let's say, Ninja White Dragon on board, you can easily lock them out the game. They can't do anything. They can't beat you because... Uh, unless you play like Storm of Mirror Force or something, then then that's that. But uh, Ninja White Dragon says, while this card is face up, uh, your opponent cannot destroy your face up spell and traps by card effects. 
So you can't <laughs> if you can't touch them, you know you can't get over anything. You need to take seed to make cast out to bounce stuff. You're like it's really hard. So with that card on the board, with that combination is on the board, which is really easy to make, you can't really do anything. You know, Macho the Monarch says you can't be, they can't be destroyed or targeted. Uh, White Ninja says that it, that uh, the, the spell traps can't be destroyed. And then the spill spell says you can't summon from an extra deck. So that, like all that in conjunction just makes you not be able to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, they have a very powerful back row. They can play like Solemn Strike. You know, uh, they can also play uh, anti spell Fragrance, which is whew, amazing. Like if I didn't think uh, if I didn't think that the number one deck was which is gonna be Peppy obviously was so powerful, then uh, I would have just definitely put this deck number one because I think it has enough speed capabilities and you know, and variety and control to be able to to win in the format, you know, if played properly, it's really, really, like, destructive. You know what I'm saying? If, you know, people can't get over it. Um, They have access to majesty and vanity as well. So more, e- even more monsters that control the board that hinder you from making plays, you know, it just, I that's even more stuff that controls the, the meta. So, you know, I just think it's amazing. Uh, I didn't know what the deck did before, but after like somebody proxied the deck out and played against me, I was like, "Oh shit, this is this is amazing." I was like, "This is pretty great," you know. So uh, I, I think it's gonna have a big showing in Atlanta, and I think it's gonna be a very powerful uh, contender for the format. And of course, number one because number one has to come eventually. Uh, we have full power Pepe. <sighs> What can I say about this deck other than it's great and amazing? Uh, has access to Insta Fusion slash Norton slash Infinity, <laughs> you know, stuff like that, slash Trap Tricks, Reflexia, Open Plays. Old Decay Potential is amazing. It can be splashed into other decks as well. Um, Performable Wizard is just bananas. Like, that card single handedly like spread the deck up immensely. It just, <sighs> oh my god. It just does so much, so much, so much for the deck than what it had before. Like, in the OCG, this deck was running rampant. We didn't think we'd really have it the way it is now in this, like, metagame and TCG, but we have it. And uh, this deck is, like, to me, this deck is tier zero. It is, like, uh, Dragon Rulers. You know, it is things like that. You know, uh, what else was, what else was... Necros, you know, it's Necros, Dragon Rulers, and then this. You know, the all those decks to me were tier zero decks. Decks that control the format perfectly. And there's no match. There is no match for this deck. Um, you know, Performable Wizard, uh, Goo Turtle, Monkey Board, Speech to the Deck, Draws. Those cards just help you draw. All these cards help you search and draw. Just thins the deck out. It is the fastest deck in the format. Access to Ignister and Omega, which are both powerful, powerful cards. They can make rank fours and synchro spam. And I don't know. I think this deck is gonna get murked out. Like in OCG, I saw the list, and the list uh, had they had, I think they banned. They didn't limit. They banned um, Juggler and something else. I forgot what it was. And oh, and Plush Fire. They banned Plush Plush Fire, and they banned Juggler. That could possibly happen here, because that's these cards are amazing, and this deck <laughs> is gonna run rampant for a while. I think they'll give it like another format or so, where they're gonna give it full power, and then then they'll hit it a little bit. But then again, more support's gonna come out, and when more support's come comes out, it's gonna be even better. So uh, we look forward to that. And that's pretty much it. That was my discussion, <laughs> even though it was all over the place. Um, it is like four in the morning, so I'm doing this. But if you enjoyed the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And as always, you have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of Yu-Gi-Oh! Later, guys. Please stay connected with me by adding me on all my social networks on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just copy the link into your search bar and add. Thank you.